Uh, Bona President, I want to start by hearing from you. Do you have any reservations about that tweet three days on? None whatsoever, simply because the question of head speech is a legal question. Mm -hmm. And as day has succeeded night, Senator Mithika Linturi was arrested, detained unlawfully for two days, and when eventually he was arraigned in court today, the Director of Public Prosecution did not have any charges to prefer against him. It is my assertion, as it was on Saturday, that the Director of Public Prosecution must exercise caution, circumspection, and must act within the law when he deals with matters of head speech. And I say that with profound authority because the National, Co the National Cohesion and mm -hmm. Integration Commission is the first port of call on matters of this kind. Where is the complainant? Has the commission dealt with the matter? Okay, and, and with all due respect, let, let me stop you there before you begin to prosecute the matter. You, the party that you now say you support UDA has come out to apologize. Senator Linturi himself has come out to apologize. What I find interesting this evening is that, again, you have no qualms, and you have told us that you're stepping into a realm beyond the law, politics. And the question of the meaning of words outside of the law, is that not something that concerns you uh, this evening? No. You see, Wahiga Maura, often as a lawyer, you will meet a client who will tell you what happened. But what happened has legal implications. And my perception of this matter is based purely upon examination of the facts and the law. Yes, the UDA party has made a statement in which it has apologized for the misinterpretation of the statement by Senator Mithika Linturi. The UDA presidential candidate and the deputy president has taken a firm position that all of us must exercise caution in the manner in which we speak. A very noble position because it is incumbent upon him as the prospective president to be the unifying factor. But it must be understood the manner in which this matter was handled leaves so much to be decided. Why is it that Senator Mithika Linturi was seized and detained for two days Yet when it came to the case of Onyonka, he was given summons to appear. The, the law must be applied equally. Otherwise, it will end up being a tool of political vindication to settle score, to leverage, to ensure that there is no level playing field. That must be understood. But when I've said that, Kenya is a country governed by the rule of law. We appreciate the step that has been taken by the Director of Public Prosecution to initiate investigations, uh -huh. but we ask that the law be applied equally to everybody. Okay. From the gains that we are making, from the I, influence I apologize that for we are having you. over the people. Let me Kenya. ask you this. So you and that is very fundamental. You see no danger with politicians moving around the country uttering words like that. You see no danger at all. Wahiga, I will repeat this. Kenya is a country governed by the rule of law. However, the law should not be used as a tool of oppression, as a tool of suppression. And it doesn't matter what the political connotation is. The law is the law. And the moment it is perceived that the director of public prosecution, the director of criminal investigations, is being used for a particular purpose, then it doesn't matter the threshold upon which those investigations began. And uh, I don't want to be a prophet of doom. If at all there was any criminal action on the part of what happened. And we're not saying that politicians should have the permission to use inappropriate language. We are referring to a particular matter. Because it, it, it is my position, and it's a strong position that I hold, that the director of public prosecution ought to have exercised caution because he cannot act unless there is a complaint before him. He must give the investigative bodies, and in this particular case, it is the commission, the right to do their work. But the moment he pinions the public, 
The moment our opponents take to that, and you see, this is how they did it. In fact, one of their key bloggers started a poll asking the question, who is finding ethnic violence best campaigns? And you saw how it went. And the DPP has not taken action against this gentleman. And this gentleman is an ODM candidate, somebody who holds sway in the social media. It is for that reason that we must insist this narrative must end. It is gone to court, let it be dealt in the manner in which it has to be dealt with. Okay. But on a, going forward, yes. we must interrogate the legal position. On a, sim on a similar note, must politicians then watch what they say? Because what you're referring to are the consequences of a statement made at a rally. If the statement had not been made, we wouldn't be here having this conversation. Do you have a message to the political class as the NSK yes, president, yes, yes. and many of whom are members of, of your council? Indeed, that is an appropriate question. Politicians must watch the manner in which they speak. And we need to, to address all the politicians. The other day, we saw Junette Mohammed tell people in Kibera, Mukiona hawa jamaa wakikuja hapa, muwachome na moto. We saw the other day, Kimemia say, tutaki madoadoa sehemu ya jubilee. We saw the other day, Raila Amolodinga utter the same word. So let's contextualize this issue. And the moment we contextualize it, we'll get a proper perspective. And I must insist this issue has been taken out of proportion to distract us from the progress that the UDA party has made, from the progress that the deputy president, William Samuel Ruto, has made insofar as the economic model which we ascribe to bottom up is gaining traction. I'll be waiting to hear from you a, a, bit, a bit about that uh, as well. But uh, Senator, come in, blown out of proportion is what uh, the LSK president feels. This no. Is the discussion that we're having this uh, evening? Uh, well, I, I think it's a very disingenuous argument that then Kimemia should be arrested for saying Madwadoa, but Linturi should not be arrested for saying Madwadoa. It's, it's a contradiction, absolute contradiction. If we were to wait for people to die before action can be taken, there will be an element of responsibility on public and state officers that have been given that job of ensuring that we have one united Kenya. And, you know, uh, Javi is a very uh, respected lawyer and, and, and a respected political player. If there was an ODM blogger, or as you said, who did things that in your view amounted to hate speech or in your view amounted to criminality under the NCIC Act, then... Why haven't you, uh, you know, made a report so that the DPP can be moved to, uh, you know, order investigations? Wahika, nations fail because of very small things. Nations fail if people cannot agree to live together. Look at Ethiopia, and I like using Ethiopia as an example. Ethiopia had one of the fastest growing economies. When you compared Ethiopia and Kenya side by side, we knew that in the next five years, Ethiopia was going to overtake Kenya. The manner in which its economy was growing, the manner in which it was investing in infrastructure, the manner in which it went to the logistics sector, Safaricom went into Ethiopia, the share price of Safaricom went up because people looked at Ethiopia as the growth frontier for Africa. What happened? Because these people could not be able to solve their ethnic differences, the Tigrayans marched on Addis Ababa and destroyed Ethiopia. Today, if you want to fly anywhere, previously, Ethiopian airline was an airline of choice. Even we Kenyans would choose Ethiopian airlines over Kenya Airways. Today, no one is comfortable to, to fly through Bole, to fly, th uh, to fly through Addis Ababa. Why? Because the political class did not exercise hygiene in their politics. And as a result, despite wealth, despite all those positive economic indicators, the country almost disintegrated. It starts with utterances like Madawadoa. Kenya is a country where you cannot call anybody um, a, a, a genuine or uh, uh, the historical owner of the places where they stay. Those of us who come from the Nyanza part perhaps march from Egypt and Sudan to settle there. There are those who march from the Congo forest to settle there. Kenya is a nation that uh, perhaps was defined by geography as per the aspirations of the colonialists who drew the borders of Kenya. We must learn to live together. And I am glad that out of Eldoret and out of Bomet and out of the activities of this week, the, the wolf that has been wearing a sheepskin has been exposed. The utterances of Senator uh, Linturi, and by the way, Wahiga, 
I, I have worked with uh, Senator Linturi for three years. He was my vice chair when I was the chair of the Public Accounts Committee. Mm -hmm. Under normal circumstances, Senator Linturi is a very decent man. In fact, back then, he was still a ranking member of Jubilee. When he went to UDA, he starts dreaming of other people as Madoadoa. There is some indoctrination that happens when these people go into UDA. And I just want to pray for Harvey that he's not going to get into some cultish activities and cultish thinking. Because even this evening, you have challenged him. You have challenged him to state his position on whether he thinks Senator Linturi was wrong. He has just engaged in linguistic gymnastics. Linturi has acknowledged that he was wrong. The deputy president has acknowledged that Linturi was wrong. I am not one of those who will spend the next one month telling the deputy president to apologize. Apologize for what? He seems to believe in the things that Linturi said. What we need to pray for is that his heart should be changed so that he is not a vengeful, divisive... What are you talking about? Uh, well, I'm talking about the deputy president, who is but the leader of the Hustler uh, Nation. Had any part in it? In fact, there, he there said are people, he... there are people who have, uh, I think, spent the last two, three days telling the deputy president to apologise. There are people who have said that he's the owner of the dog, and so he's the one who should be called to order. I don't want to take that line. I just want Kenyans to pray for the deputy president so that he can be less angry, so that he can be less vengeful, so that he can be less dis uh, divisive. Can that is my prayer pray for the for deputy president. Political class collectively. I think would be the question. I know we have some feedback. 2242 is the SMS line, and the hashtag is Newsnight. Uh, let me allow President Harvey just to say one thing, then we can read some of your messages. I don't know if you have a response. Now, if you listen to the conversation between uh, President Barack Obama and Trevor Noah a few days before he left uh, the White House, he said because of his position as the President of the United States of America, he must hedge his language. He must take into account the rights of those people who are listening to him. And for that reason, he will adopt a language insofar as race is concerned that is appropriate. As we have spoken here, Wahiga, you've heard the word demagogue, you've heard the word cult, amongst many other words that are associated with this team. I can assure my colleague here that I'm fastidious, not only in my manner of presentation, but also in my manner of communication. And I think that is a matter of public notoriety. And this is a virtue that prevails amongst the, the, the rank of UDA. For instance, when we were in Eldoret, you saw the eloquence with which uh, Anne Waiguru spoke, Ket, uh, uh, Ket Waru, uh, Ket, Waruguru, uh, Waruguru uh, Alice Wahome, Aisha Jumwa, uh, Susan Kihika, uh, Boss Sholei, do, do you find these people in, uh, in Odium? You won't find them. And this explains why they have taken a deliberate move to castigate, to denigrate, especially the women in UDA. You've seen that particular blogger I've mentioned. Every day he talks about room 350. What does he mean? That these women do not have capacity to lead? You see, it must be perceived from this context. And if my colleague and his team did not learn communication skills, it's high time they did. Because, as I've said, they are finding a fire that ought not to be there. It's as simple as that. Let them concentrate on what agenda they have for the people of Kenya. Because they have none. If they had any, they would have responded chapter by verse to what about 150 of us said in Eldred on that day, they have nothing in response. They can only cling on this uh, uh, narrative that they're spewing around. But because of my civility, I don't want to call it shenanigans. But in actual fact, these are shenanigans. Which makes me wonder, <laughs> Mr. President, did you attend Saturday's rally in your capacity as a, an aspirant, the president of the LSK, a senior lawyer? Help clarify that. A few uh, people have been asking that question. Wahiga, and uh, many Kenyans must understand this. The leadership class we have in Kenya does not descend from heaven, come on earth, and get elected. It is in our midst, you understand? I should not be vilified or castigated for being a member of the UDA. It is my political right given under the Constitution. And I'm not the first one. Honorable Paul Kibugi Muite was the chairman of the Law Society of Kenya and at the same time the, the vice president of Ford. 
You see, we're not so inventing for those who are con con worried, you are now divided. One minute you're defending clans, the other minute you're no, in no, no. Uh, UDA I'm, colors. I'm, where I'm, where are I'm your priorities? I'm versatile and multifaceted. And if you were to check my track record insofar as what I do in court is concerned, excellent. If you had to check my track record insofar as my leadership is concerned, excellent. Why do you expect me to act otherwise in the political arena? I've told it won't change, and it is now manifest. Senator, I'm sure you want to say something, but let me read some tweets here. Here's what we have. 2242 is the SMS line. Hashtag Newsnight. What a way to start uh, Newsnight. Although we had a show last week, but of course, really get into a debate this evening. Young Blood says, they are sure there are no consequences. That's why small, small cash bails and bonds and a night in, pol in posh police cells won't deter them from reckless utterances, blacklist them and see none will tell them how to speak. So I think they're calling for greater consequences for our leaders uh, and how they speak on political uh, platforms. Engineer Lazaro Kanyambok, you say parliament should enact tough laws that prevent inciters and warmongers from vying. That's the only way of ensuring elections will be free from tribal clashes. Scared politicians often using violence to scare away rival supporters. Okay, Kariz. In Harvey's opinion, how does the law cater for those who incur the consequences of such statements, some of whom are six feet under? Okay, I'll get a chance to hear from him on that. Nyamogi Gogni, you say political loose tongues in an electioneering period must never be taken lightly because they are the main causes of deadly electoral violence before, during, and after the polls. Let the law favor none for the sake of peaceful 2022 polls. All right, we have one or two more. Uh, being Charlie, you say it's very disappointing that highly educated and widely traveled individuals are at the forefront of loose speech. All right, at Wanjiros, you say the tongue is like a lion. If let loose, it wounds and can wound deep. No matter political divide, political party bosses must condemn hate speech. For political mileage, politicians shouldn't open up political scars or let their tongues and their heart outrace their brains. All right, and uh, Emoni Gideon, you say, how will it work if the judicial sector acts as an anti-law against the government? They're given culprits, they release them the following day or take centuries without delivering the verdict. Politicians know that nothing will happen to them. I think we have one more, two more. Okay, Frederick Okango, you say without prejudice, this is the Secretary General of uh, Kanu, I believe, without prejudice, we must promote tolerance, understanding, and acceptance of diversity in all aspects of life, encourage full participation by all ethnic communities in social, economic, cultural, and political life of other communities. Okay, uh, okay, Lomolimu, you say politicians, very interesting mammals. You close for them one door, they invent another one. Now that they know that they are on the raid of NCIC for propagating hate speech, they'll find alternative routes like propaganda. Gashuhi Gadago, you say peace is so sweet. Let our leaders not divide us and breach the prevailing peace. However, let the whip on hate speech be fair. Also, a message here from Honorable Moses Kuria, who's watching us, I believe, from outside the country. He says, there is no point charging politicians because the High Court declared Section 96 of the Criminal Procedure Code, which is incitement to violence and disobedience to the law, unconstitutional, and that ruling still stands. The only punishment that the politicians suffer is pre-plea detention and higher bail terms. He then says that as a reformed ranking member of that ignominious club who had charges in 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, all acquitted, I can only say that the ultimate solution is self-regulation among the political class. This is Honorable Moses Kuri I'm talking about, and adherence to a code of conduct. Uh, the Gatundu South Member of Parliament then goes on to say, I will be starting peer-to-peer -peer coaching lessons to those willing to reform like I did when I return to Kenya. Moses Kuria says he's starting peer-to-peer -peer coaching lessons for the political class. He says he's learned his lesson. I don't know if others have. Senator, go ahead. I know you've been waiting. Well, I don't necessarily want to respond to Javi, but um, the, the feedback on Twitter has just summarized the thoughts of Kenyans. We must accept that as politicians, we have played the wrong role in not uniting the nation but in dividing the nation. And that is why, um, Oiga, our agenda on the Azimio side is to first unite the country. Because we believe that even if you are to put food on the table, 
even if you are going to put cash in people's pocket, but there is no cohesion. Uh, a Kikuyu and a Kalenjin cannot live side by side. A Lu and a Kisi cannot live by, side by side. As long as we still look at each other as Kisi, Luya, uh, Arab, and, and Indian, that food on the table will not satisfy us. That money in the pocket will not be there sustainably. And that is why in our hierarchy of, 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 of policies, at the top of it is national unity. After that, we go to economic prosperity. And after that, we go to social justice. Um, Harvey said that we should be responding to the things that were said in Eldoret. Waiga, there is nothing to respond to. 96% of the speakers were chanting Harambe and UDA, and others were calling Raila Amganga, and uh, that uh, script okay, has been you there. You don't have to repeat what they, what that, they that, said. That script has been there. We, we, we don't waste time to respond to it. But there's one thing the Deputy President said that I agreed with, surprisingly. The Deputy President said that there is a shortage of fools in this country, and I agree with him absolutely. Hakuna wajinga Kenya hii. Because if Kenyans were fools, Your translation then, is, is upside down. Kenya haina upungufu wa wajinga. There is no shortage. Okay, Kenya haina upungufu wa wajinga. Yeah. Uh, in, in other there's words, no shortage that, of fools in Kenya. that, that, uh, that uh, there's a shortage, there's a scarcity of fools in Kenya. Now let me put it properly. <laughs> if there was no shortage of fools in Kenya, mm -hmm. then we would forget that the deputy president has been in cabinet from the, from the year 2002 to date in the Moi government, in the Kibaki government, and as a deputy president in the Uhuru government. All these things is talking about bottom up. Why didn't he espouse them when he was in office? If there was a shortage of fools in Kenya, then we would forget that the deputy president was in charge of agriculture at a time when we had far-reaching reforms in the agriculture sector. If the issues is talking about around fertilizer prices and subsidies and national cereals and produce board, can he give us a scorecard of his performance during that time? If there was a shortage of fools in this country, Waihiga, then we would forget that in terms of dispossession of persons like the late Muteshi, in terms of land grabbing, and in terms of corruption allegations, well, they've been swirling is it, around is it, is his head. Is it proper for you the, to the, allow the Honorable I'm, I'm talking about Senator a matter to continue spewing head speech? This, this, is, not, this, this is not his speech. Not this is a matter that, up, Senator, this is a ma the, the, the issue of Muteshi is a fact. I am not making it up. The issue of Western Hotel is still in the courts of law. Why is it that corruption cases keep swelling around the head of the deputy president okay. like flies S Senator, would follow. Let, let me ask you this. Stop. Senator, if, let, let if, me, if there was stop. a shortage of fools in yeah. this country, Wahiga, we would, not, we would not reflect on those things. Let me ask you this briefly. How do we handle hate speech challenges moving forward? I am, because I, politicians will continue scapegoating and saying, it wasn't what I meant, etc. We need solutions. How, where do we find solutions? There is a process that is going on now. Senator Linturi, Senator Chiriot, and Honorable Onyonka are uh, before uh, uh, the criminal justice system for their utterances. Let us allow them to do what they need to do. Moses Kuria has talked of certain sections of the law having been uh, uh, deemed unconstitutional. Those arguments will be presented uh, before the courts of law. The issue of self-regulation by politicians has failed. Our politicians, unless you've got consequences, unless you show them consequences, unless you show them a sword, uh, we've shown ourselves to be incapable of self-regulation. It took the threat of ICC. It took the threat of uh, jail terms for Uhuru Kenyatta and, uh, and, and William Ruto for them to be forced to work together to cobble up the Jubilee coalition. Yet, that also did not solve the problems that we had. The NCIC that has been bastardized uh, of uh, its inability to rein in these uh, war mongers and hate mongers, one of the cardinal duties of the NCIC is to define and advocate a national identity and values. And I think there we have failed as a nation. We have failed to come up with a national identity. Mm -hmm. We have failed to come up with values where Kenyans look at themselves as Kenyans the same way Tanzanians look at themselves as Tanzanians. Okay. And that is a cardinal point in our Azimio Laumoja. And that's why I said bringing the, building a nation is at the top of the hierarchy. In fact, you'd rather build a nation first instead of saying that let's make our people rich and build the nation later. We will go the Ethiopia way. President Hav, even as you respond, we haven't heard much of successful 
prosecution of cases of hate speech. In fact, the little research that I did, many cases have collapsed in court, and the only case that was successful, I think, there's a university student who was jailed for, I think, about a year for uh, advice for abuse on social media. What does that tell us about the threshold of the law on hate speech? Now, the reason why we have continuously experienced handicaps mm. in successful prosecution of head speech is because often head speech has been politicized. It has been weaponized. Why do I say so? I say so because of the following reasons. Head speech is specifically defined under the Act. And in this particular case, is utterances or action that tend to indicate discrimination on ethnic basis, ethnic, ethnicity. That is the fundamental issue. Now, what always happens is this. Whenever a particular person speaks in a way that may be perceived to be influential or divergent and without proper oversight, investigative bodies kick in. Look at the case of Mithika Linturi and permit me to repeat it. What did the Director of Public Prosecution say? Commence investigations and give me the file within 14 days. And here is where I agree to a very little extent with Dr. Fred Matiangi. We have a problem in the police force. I think it's a problem of comprehension. What was difficult in that statement? Was it an order to arrest? No. So you arrest somebody, you unlawfully detain him, and then when you come to court, you have no charge. You have no witnesses. The case is dead on arrival. What should we do? Let's follow what the law says. A complaint must be lodged with the National Cohesion and Integration Commission. Mm. It must be interrogated. Conciliation must be pursued. If it fails, then prosecution must ensure. And for you to bring a case that will succeed on prosecution, it must be a genuine case. You see, if I was to go and say, this guy has called me a demagogue, has called me a cultist, those are mere insults. And people with greater learning like myself are impervious to such insults. But some have what we call in law the, the egg skull susceptibility, they are susceptible, you understand? So the onus here rests on the National Cohesion and Integration Commission as well as the Director of Public Prosecution. The Director must stop being impetuous. He must be calm, he must be collected, he must let due process to be followed. Otherwise, you'll go up with a case like this one. Look, what is the fine for this offense? It's one million. On what basis will a magistrate give uh, uh, a suspect a cash bail of two million? You don't see something wrong here? There is a problem. And unless we solve this problem, we'll not find a solution. Okay. But fundamentally, I want to agree with Moses Kuria. Let us have a culture of civility. You understand? And this culture must be inculcated most fundamentally on these characters who call themselves as Miola Umoja. Because you can't be calling yourself as Miola Umoja, yet your main agenda is division. You understand? Castigating everybody. And that's what they've been doing. But we must do what we have to do. Senator, right now, mm. we must appeal to the people of Kenya to see the propriety of the bottom-up economic model, the progress that we seek to bring. Otherwise, will remain in stagnation with old ideas, ideas that do not have transformation, the ones that our opponents want to espouse. And when they fail to make progress, they start looking for pumpkin seeds in the dung of the elephant. You won't find it. That is the problem. Senator, uh, as, I, as I react and think through what uh, LSK president has just said, if you read the deeper meaning of what he's talking about, he's questioning whether the law is being used to suppress freedom of expression. Where are the boundaries? And there are Kenyans asking that this evening. Where are the boundaries on this? First of all, pumpkin seeds on the dung of an elephant tend to thrive because of the manure that comes with it. 
And that's the kind of inflammatory remarks that we had from Eldoret. Those are the pumpkin seeds in the dung of the elephant, which if not nipped early, can grow into a huge bush, can uh, flourish like bushfire, can burn the country. So I think let's not trivialize some of those things. Let's not trivialize them at the expense of uh, procedures and technicalities. Because in those seven days that uh, you are saying that let's still do investigations, what if the people of Wasingishu, in their fervent uh, support and in that moment, decided to take action on the Madwadoas? Will you start saying that no, we are still conducting investigations on Senator Linturi? In fact, I am, and, and I've said it earlier, I am happy that uh, Senator Linturi saw the folly of his actions and he put out an apology. That helps to nip that pumpkin seed from sprouting. It helps to sp uh, stop the spread of, of that, 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 that thinking that some people do not belong somewhere. The issues of hate speech, and I know that the definition in, uh, in, in the NCIC Act has been problematic. In the, par in the last parliament, we used to interact a lot with Francis Ole Caparo. We realized that the NCIC hate speech takes a lot of attention because it is political and it's, uh, it's glamorous. It, it captures the headlines. But the NCIC deals with a lot of other cohesion issues. If you go to northern Kenya, you'll find conflict perhaps between the Borana and other communities. If you go to uh, perhaps northwestern uh, Kenya, you'll find cattle rustling which is as a result of ethnic animosity and, and, and ethnic differences. So there's a much bigger spectrum to issues of unity and the issues that divide us as a nation. But hate speech is purely the responsibility of, uh, of politicians because they are the ones who tend to get the platform and tend to get the visibility and tend to get the opportunity to say things that divide people. Self-regulation, uh, is, is fairly difficult, but I would perhaps want to uh, propose that if a politician in any of the political formations finds himself before a court on allegations of incitement to violence or hate speech, perhaps we should also invoke our own party internal mechanisms to ensure that such persons are not granted certificates to run for elective positions. We have said that even in the past, that if you have candidates with uh, dubious economic uh, uh, records or persons who are facing charges, and I know the lawyers will say you are innocent until proven guilty, mm. but we've seen cases, uh, Wahiga, where uh, cases drag on for five years. So someone is voted out of office, he spends the next five years fighting battles in court, and those issues are not determined, and he gets re-elected again, and then it is a continuation. I think if we are going to talk of self-regulation, as Moses Kuria was talking about, we then must go back to our political parties and say that we shall have zero tolerance to warmongers, we shall have zero, zero tolerance to uh, uh, accused or alleged thieves, and we shall have zero tolerance to those who have been accused or who have been alleged to have uh, taken things that fall short of Chapter 6 of the Constitution. President Harvey, I want to get a comment from you on agencies that, uh, in a sense, all seem to react to public sentiment rather than their own volition when we hear of incidents like this. But we do know in the past, in, for example, the NCIC, in the run-up to the 2017 election, they told us that they have recorders that they'll use in you know, rallies and that sort of thing to publicly catch perpetrators in the act and use that as evidence. Uh, the proof of that, however, has not been clear. Again, the independence of some of these agencies has been brought into question. I want to give you a chance to respond as to what you feel the NCIC can do better at a time like this. Well, Baura, the reason why some of us have decided to get into the legislature is so that we are able to make good laws. There is a problem here. Look at the manner of appointment of those commissioners. There's a credible merit in the fear that uh, they, they are in office to serve a particular purpose. Because ideally, with an elaborate mechanism with which to perform their work, they ought to perform their work. So they need to be effective oversight in the manner in which the commissioners for this commission are appointed. Otherwise, if the appointments will be skewed on political alignments, you will have a situation whereby every time a, a speaker whose view appears unpalatable, 
or whose views are divergent will be singled out for identification by the commission. And uh, we have had a very good relationship with the director of public prosecution. He does a very fantastic job. My only counsel to him is this. Could he kindly read the act? The person supposed to investigate is the commission, not the National Police Service. You don't write your instructions to the National Police Service and you copy it to the commission. That's why you end up rendering the commission incapable of doing its work. Let the commission do its work. And you see, if due process is not followed, we are justified, and it is our responsibility as lawyers to demand that the law be followed. People will make noise. Let them make noise. But the point is this, uh, and it must be understood by all Kenyans. Our responsibility as lawyers is not to participate in mob lynching. It's to analyze the facts and the law. And I can tell you, I was in Eldoret. I perceived the facts. I've analyzed the law. And I will not change my position just because a mob is of a different persuasion. That is not my orientation as a lawyer. I must have a clear path upon which to make deliberate decisions. And here in UDA, we are proud because we have many lawyers of this persuasion. You understand? And when it comes to making those appointments for that commission, we look forward to a government that we're seeking to form where this commission will be able to do its work, where the DPP will be able to do his work, where the DCI will be able to do them. Right now, they're not doing the work. They're receiving phone calls, go and arrest this one, go and arrest this one, detain this one. You see, if this trend persists, all the speakers who accompany the, the, the deputy president will be facing summons. With what result? We'll not be able to sell our agenda. That is the intention. Let's not beat around the bush. That is the intention. So that we're not able to sell our agenda. So that we're not able to cover as much territory. Now that the ground is very receptive of what we're doing. And in a democratic state, such a situation must never prevail. And I will say this, and I will repeat, the DPP must work without direct or indirect control from somebody else. The DCI, even the courts, the magistrate who gave a cash bail of two million must explain why she gave a cash bail, which is even double the fine. It doesn't happen. That is abuse of office. And some of us are determined to call out these officers. Because if we don't, Kenya will plummet into destruction. Senator. We do need to take that break, though. Come back and read a, f a few tweets. The president there talking about what he'll do. Should he get into office? Uh, is the road straightforward on the political front? You, you know, uh, as clear a path as he has espoused this evening? Well, well, he got something extremely important that uh, those, of us, those of us who studied even uh, conflict in other areas, particularly the Rwanda situation, early warning systems. And the NCIC has been talking about it, but they've not demonstrated uh, the, the, what they've rolled out for early warning and detection of violence. I know they've got a roadmap uh, for a peaceful uh, election, mm. and uh, they've got some document that they've posted online. But I, 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 I'm just wondering, if there was a spontaneous reaction to the Madwakdoa comment, and people were getting uprooted, well, he got, let's not uh, gloss over these things. And, and we need to tell Kenyans the, the truth, the bare truth about our history. The bare truth about our history around the time we are talking about tribal clashes, areas like Molo, areas where all Kenyans had settled to practice agriculture and living together as brothers and sisters. And every time we have elections, they are reminded that they are Madwadoa, they should be going back home. Wahiga, I've got a significant population in my county, people who used to live and work in Naivasha. Some of them were working as fishermen because they took the skills they got from Lake Victoria. They went to Naivasha. It took only one night. It did not take seven days. It did not take the police to complete investigations. It took only one night for them to be evicted from places that they had called home for generations. Some of them came back to Homa Bay. One of them is still alive, was almost burnt alive. He's got those scars on his body. It did not take those seven days of investigation that I was talking about for the church in Kiamba to be burnt. It was a spontaneous eruption. When it comes to things that threaten the unity that threatened the cohesion, that threatened the stability of this nation. 
all public and state officers who have been vested with that responsibility must take action to nip everything in the bud before it explodes. Uh, the Rwandese today, they regret that they wish they had taken action earlier. The United Nations, even if you read uh, Kofi Annan's book, he, the regret that he has is that he wishes that, he, that, that the United Nations had taken action earlier instead of going through the bureaucracies and the, 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 the technocrats that were existing in the UN system, they would have saved lives. We cannot put bureaucracy and uh, technocracies in the path of national healing. We cannot allow a situation where the nation could implode at any moment. And then we argue that someone should be given seven days of investigation. I am proud of what the, the, uh, the police, the NCIC, the DPP have done because it has squeezed an apology from Senator Linturi. It has diffused a bomb that could have exploded. It has squeezed an apology from the deputy president. Because you can imagine the situation. If uh, the UDA soldiers kept defending Senator Linturi, the Madoadoa comments, that pumpkin seed in the dung of the elephant would have sprouted. And Wahiga, we have not dealt with those historical injustices. We thought that by folding URP and TNA to form Jubilee, we thought that by having William Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta on the same table, we are going to address those long-standing grievances between these communities that have lived together but fight every time there is an election. We have a serious problem, and that problem will not be solved through the administrative and, uh, and um, uh, technocratic approaches that the lawyers are proposing. We must get political solutions. We must get early warning and detection systems. We must nip these issues in the bud before they explode and burn this country. Okay, on that note, let's take a short break. When we come back, tough conversation that we're having this evening. 11 days into the new year, an election round the corner, but hate speech, political intolerance, unfortunately, is the discussion right now. And the question is, we cannot go back to where the country has been, but also the law must be followed. I like uh, some of the messages that are coming in one tweet that I want to read here. Uh, somebody here says, ethnic profiling is dangerous, but skimmed, ap skewed application of the law will not heal this country. So we must bear that in mind. Ethnic profiling, dangerous, but skewed application of the law will not heal this country as well. On that note, let's take a break. Come back, read a bit of your feedback, get final thoughts from my guests. Uh, helping us really understand what's happening in the country. We have the LSK President Nelson Harvey and the Senator from Homer Bay, Moses Kajuang. You're watching Newsnight. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. You're watching Newsnight, and I'm seeing, uh, trying to see through some of your messages as well. Let's take a look at your tweets, and I'll read a few SMSs. 224 to tweet the SMS line, and the hashtag is Newsnight. Okay, let's see here. Edgar Elirot says, can you ask the LSK boss about the petition that's been filed by activist Okiom Tata over the DP resigning from office? Maybe, are you aware of that petition? intellectual idleness. Uh, the constitution is very clear. The, 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 there are certain state officers who are exempt from the requirement that they must resign before. And, and these are some of uh, the bubs that are being thrown, you know. The political ploy in your view. Yeah, they, they file it. You find it as a headline in the star. They got nothing to publish, but all this nonsense. You call it intellectual? Idleness. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Alex Mayore, you say, why don't political parties take responsibility by denying members in their camps who practice hate speech to run for elections? We don't have to wait for IBC to bar or prevent them from running for election. Tupunguzia IBC Kazi. Indeed, they're on a tight budget. Okay. Uh, Miatren, you say, kindly ask Senator Kajuang, how Azimio aims to bring together Kenyans? How? What have they put in place? Which measures, apart from rallies? Senator. I, I don't think rallies, rallies are just a sensitization tool that we are using to reach out to Kenyans. We are trying to build a political vehicle that will bring different shades and ideologies that are aligned to us. Of course, ODM is a social democratic movement. And uh, even today in Parliament, uh, today in the Senate, the political party's amendment bill was read a first time that will facilitate the establishment of coalition parties. We take note that many of the political parties in this country 
were formed on tribal and regional basis, which is unconstitutional. And to that extent, we agree, and I think the Deputy President has also been talking about parties that have been created, uh, their brief, briefcase uh, parties. I do recall the late um, uh, party leader of, of, of TIPTIP, Kalembe Ndile, and, and I remember there's a nomination or an election where he, he was a thriving entrepreneur because once you lose the nomination in the main party, he would quickly sign for you a nomination certificate for a small fee. We want to make sure that we have a, a coalition of parties that are grounded on ideology. Some of these parties, and, and, and now I'm not talking about the tip-tips, I'm talking about significant parties with presence in parliament and with uh, greater regional representation. We believe that this country cannot be ruled by one formation alone because of the fractious nature of our politics. Uh, in the past elections, people have been voting on ethnic lines. People have been voting on regional lines. We want to demystify that. Whereas the UDA camp are talking about a class war, they want to move uh, one class against the other, as we want to bring regions, is that ideologies. Is that a fair statement to uh, make? Th that, is, that is my assessment because I listen to the conversations in Eldoret, in Bomet, and in Kericho, and I've listened to them consistently, and that is the, uh, that is the message I get. And, and indeed, uh, Wahiga, uh, I, I think uh, Harvey uh, took it wrongly. Uh, demagogue is not necessarily an insult. There have been some dem demagogues that have been very successful. I'm over it. I'm impervious there, there, to there are some insults. demagogues that have been very, very successful. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we are trying to bring together uh, this parties that represent different interests uh, so that we can build a coalition that can run this country. That's how we, you're do not, we do not want a one-man rule. Okay. We do not want a one-man dictatorship in Kenya. Okay. Let me read some more feedback here. Kelvin Ki Kirui 12, you say, truth be told, if we are to fight hate speech, let the law be fair in fighting this. Let us all preach peace. Okay. Uh, Isaac Mwangi, PhD, you say, unfortunately, the probability of being elected rises with the degree of the toxicity of the tongue. The harder you hit the perceived opponents, the greater the support. Everyone must take responsibility. Peace has become a perishable good in this country every election. Okay. Charlo Wood Rossi, you say, we have laws that if implemented fully, no politician will even think of uttering hate speech in political campaigns. The problem we have as Kenyans is that we support such leaders, even allow them to vie in various offices. They should be barred from vying. Charlo, that's your message. Jalal, uh, you have a challenge with Nelson Harvey. You are saying he's in fresh waters. A greenhorn is how you describe him. He doesn't know that words in politics are the fuel, the lighter, and the wind for an inferno. Harvey, can you respond to Jalal? I want to give you a right of reply. No one ever rose but he who was down. No wonder, therefore, our bottom-up economic model... No, it's not protest. about bottom-up. It's about, it's about you. It's, it's about okay. you. I'm very proficient in English. My comprehension is without doubt. I'm a greenhorn. I'm in new waters. I have potential to grow and prosper. Nothing wrong about it. Nobody was born mature. And I have no apologies for it. Throughout my life, I've grown learning new things. Those who don't want to learn have a big problem. I'm your, prepared to learn. Could your tweet on Saturday have been a greenhorn's tweet? Because he's concerned that your tweet did not take into account that words can fuel light and provide the wind for an inferno. No. You see, Wahiga, people of my orientation take a lot of time to consider what they say and will often not apologize because our pronouncements are well thought. And uh, history will prove me right. Ithika Linturi will be acquitted. You understand? This is a politicized enterprise. I will not participate in a mob lynch, however many the people in the mob lynch. I'm forthright. I'm determined. I do that which is right, even okay. if unpopular to the majority. That is me. Well, well, I think it would be unfair to call uh, Javier Greenhorn. You don't become an LSK president by being a Greenhorn. It's okay. It's, it's, it's one I'm of impervious. The, it's, it's, one, it's, it's, it's one of, it's, it's, it's one of the most, uh, <laughs> most important positions. <laughs> but, but, and, 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 and you see, you see Uhaiga, and that is why what Javier says, he, does not, he cannot be excused as a Greenhorn. When he, when he defends Mithika Linturi's Madwadwa utterances, 
He cannot run away saying that he's a greenhorn. This is an experienced politician who knows what he's saying, who believes in what he's saying. It's in his DNA. Perhaps yes, those and, Madoadoa things, he believes in it. And that's why he's defending uh, Mithika Linturi. And tonight, he's not, not defending Mithika. About Linturi. Of course he's not defending is, Mithika because he's a green on. He's not a green on. This is a perfect politician. We're with him on the other side. Uh, before he, uh, perhaps it's the indoctrination I was talking about. I withdraw the word you, count. You know, you know Waiga Maura, permit me just to, to progress. We are reading a 70-page novel. And my friend is just determined to read a one-page poem with a recital in Kiswahili Kibwagizo. He keeps on going back to it. Evident lack of progression, retarded growth in communication. Now, I want to appeal to the people of Kenya, of all walks of lives, to embrace the bottom-up economic model. Here in UDA, we have space for everybody. We're not balkanized. We are not ethnicized. We are not grouped. You will find lawyers, you will find doctors, okay. teachers, you will find the youth, the women. We don't disparage women. We encourage them. We empower them. No wonder they will use this to bring us down. But this is the way to go. Okay. This is the way for Canada. And I'll call you next time, and I think we will have a discussion now on the strengths and uh, challenges of political parties. Uh, President Harvey, Lionel Kiongozi, you say in matters of cohesion of the country, all politicians should take a lead. It's not a matter of sides. And if I can just read um, uh, one uh, question here, uh, to, um, a message rather on 2242. You say, Wahiga, tell them we are watching them. This is not a time for politics. The subject is tongues and handcuffs and solutions to this big question. Okay? Uh, and let me see if there are uh, uh, other ones. Uh, as well. Uh, Senator, sir, not Senator, sir, Nixon Dugira, you say it's now evident. Politicians and bloggers are working, pick negative lines from their opponents to use them as whips as well. As we wrap up this discussion, one, a very interesting message there, that the more rabid your tongue is, the more likely you are to get elected. Is that a factor in politics today? But someone else here saying, Ask your guests for solutions. We've hinted on that a little bit, but I want to give you each a chance to have that as we wrap up this discussion. Senator, maybe it's fair that I, I start with you. It, it, it is really unfortunate that uh, what the viewer has said is true, that uh, the, the more radical you seem to be in defending your uh, kingpin, uh, the more the voters want to embrace you. And uh, I think that has been part of the negative side of our politics. The self-regulation that has been proposed by Kuria and uh, which a viewer has also extended by saying that political parties should play a role by vetting those people who are running for positions and looking at their history and making sure that they are not electing people with excess baggage. That would help. We have come a long way when it comes to multi-party democracy. We have come a long way when it comes to strengthening political parties. And that is why some of the amendments that are currently before parliament will empower political parties to have the financial resources, to have the discipline, to have the structures, so that they can be able to carry out elections in a manner that helps to weed out those people who seem to have baggages that should not be brought into parliament. I think that that would be a starting point. Of course, our criminal justice system should also be alert, and we must also invest in early warning and detection systems. If we think that national unity and cohesion is expensive, then let's look at what happened to Rwanda. Millions and thousands, thousands and thousands of lives that were lost and millions that were displaced. If we think national unity and cohesion is expensive, let's look at Somalia. There is a generation that is voting now, probably voting for the second time, that has never seen Somalia as a nation state. Yet at independence, Somalia and Kenya were at par. If we think national unity and cohesion is expensive, Wahiga, look at even the United States of America. Just the other day, Joe Biden delivered a scathing speech at the Capitol, reflecting on what happened about one year ago at the Capitol when those who uh, did not accept the results of the election came and raided the Capitol. There are many examples, be it in Yugoslavia, be it in Armenia. There are so many examples. We must invest in national unity. We must invest in a political leader who prioritizes a national identity, national values, and national ethos. Those have been very consistent terminologies coming from the mouths of my party leader. When he declared he was running for president in Kasarani, nobody uttered 
words like badawadawa. Nobody okay. scandalized. You, yes. Nobody scandalized anybody because of the color of his skin. Our party leader indeed said he is running for president, not because he wants to compete with anybody or because he's against anybody, but because he believes that he's got ideas that can transform this nation. And I believe, Wahiga, that in five years, it is possible for us to overturn the headlines that we saw today. 53% poverty rate. That is unacceptable 58 years after independence. But it is only through investment in that national unity that even the concepts of bottom-up, which uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, Harvey should have been uh, asked to explain, because after parroting it for the last three years, Kenyans still don't understand it. But those Kenyans who have been afflicted those Kenyans who have been displaced, those fishermen who are kicked out of Naivasha, those farmers in Molo who are told to go back to Kisi or wherever they came from, they understand that with a united and cohesive nation, they can work anywhere, okay. they can employ their productive energies anywhere, yes. and we can grow the economy of this country. Okay, thank you, Senator. President, uh, polls coming up in the next seven, eight months or so, Kenyans saying we want peace. What does that path look like, even as you give us your final thoughts? UDA is a party of peace. Our opponents are merchants of fear. We are preaching hope, prosperity, and a good future. You see, you have the rear mirror and you have the front windshield. If the horizon is clear, don't keep looking at the rear mirror. Drive forth. We are driving forth. And it is our expectation that as many as they are Kenyans eligible to vote will embrace this model. And uh, let me just pick one of the questions that was raised. That bloggers and po politicians speak segments of what has been said and propel them out of proportion. That is exactly the position. Let us contextualize issues as they are. You cannot come to a class as you brought us to a class here. You give us an examination history, yet somebody proceeds to answer a question in, in, uh, in home science. I mean, it turns logic over its head. When we say we need the people of Kenya to vote six piece from pre president to MCA, we just mean that, and it's for good purpose, so that we don't have shaky governments that propel whoever is in power to seek solace outside in terms of handshake. You waste four years of economic development that you've set out in your four-point agenda. We want a government that is able to deliver. And it's for that reason that I plead with the people of Kenya to find favor in UDA, to vote in Deputy President William Samoy Ruto as the president, and to vote in all other aspirants vying on account of this progressive movement. That is the only way in which we will achieve hope. Otherwise, you will continue buying fear day after day. You will continue buying fear in every market because the only commodity that our opponent have is fear. And they're selling fear every day. You need not fear. You need to have hope. It's only with hope that you'll see tomorrow a peaceful tomorrow one promised by UDA. Thank you. And those are the words of uh, Nelson Harvey, LSK president. For how long, may I ask? Well, uh, in American political terminology, mm. I've effectively become lame duck. My cabinet will not listen to me. The Congress will not listen to me. Nobody will listen to me. But that is growth. You must leave certain people behind. You must leave certain ideas behind for you to progress. It's part of growth. Indeed, nobody will listen to him. I, 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 I leave office on the 24th uh, of March. 24th of March. 24th of March. My, my very good friend here, I, I wish him the very best. From that side, he appears to be one of the few polished, elegant, and articulate uh, honorable uh, gentlemen. I look forward to working with him uh, in Parliament. Our, Senator, ranks, our ad... ranks are deep. Our ranks are deep. Senator, any advice for Harvey on this path that he wants to pursue? You no, know, the good thing about uh, uh, Harvey's legislative journey is uh, already in Parliament, he knows where the tea is served. So he has already ticked one box. So what I'll just show him is where the pigeon holes are. 
I'll also show him. I uh, occupy the kitchen. Well, <laughs> I don't need to be given directions. That, that's so, the first so, thing. So, a serious so, soldier so he knows where, occupy he knows where to find the tea. <laughs> he knows where to find yeah, the tea. Yeah, he's, he's been there before. Uh, he came to storm and <laughs> occupy parliament. And then. Uh, when, By the way, you guys are when, in office uh, illegally when, because when, parliament is unconstitutional. When, when, <laughs> when he came across tea. So, the, the earlier you stopped this. Uh, <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, I think we have this. All right. I wish him well. You know, Wahiga, I wish him well. I'd love to have someone like Harvey sit. Sitting the opposition benches, he will keep us awake. That's yeah. why we wrap this up. Uh, we will <laughs> call them later asleep. on when uh, campaigns are on proper. Although campaigns have been going on for some time, but I think we'll have to have these two gents back on. At least we finished with a bit of a smile, even though these are uh, tough times uh, for the country, economically, but also politically, with the kind of uh, sentiments that have been in the air over the last couple of days. It's been about tongues and handcuffs. And we really hope for better days ahead in the run-up to the election. And of course, here on Newsnight, we endeavor to bring you leaders to discuss issues that are real, uh, to discuss where we've come from. You can't forget history, where we are, and where we need to move forward to as a country. Thank you so much for having tuned in. Let me thank my guests, uh, LSK President Nelson Harvey. Thank you for your time this evening. Anytime. Together with the Senator of Homer Bay, Moses Kajwang. And to our viewers, thank you for tuning in. Whatever you watch us from in Kenya and around the world in Kenya, I certainly hope the power is now back, wherever you're watching us from. Uh, and we'll keep updating you on that situation should there be more to speak of. But on behalf of the whole team that's made this broadcast possible, our sign language interpreter this evening has been Joki Shege. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good night. Stay safe and peace in this country. Uh, and adherence to the law, may I also add, very important at a time like this. Good night. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.